Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is featuring some products from Gina K Designs. This uh, Precious Poinsettia set is actually part of her winter foliage kit. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But I'm also using the Stellar Snowflake and um, what's the other one? Oh, you know what? I didn't end up using that sentiment set, but it is super cute and I have used it in the past. Um, some of these are older products because you guys know I really like, you know, kind of stretching what I have. I'm trying to find the name of this thing. What is it? Seasonal Greetings. That's what it is. Nice and easy. Um, so here I have some of Gina's teal cardstock and I'm just doing a little bit of ink blending. Um, I am using her blending brushes, which are fantastic. They put down a lot of ink, which I really appreciate because it helps me to um, get a lot of color on there and take less time to do it, which I like <laughs> quite a bit. Um, and then hers have little, you can purchase um, like the color coded tags, which I did because it makes them prettier. Um, but so that's what I'm using here. And I'm just using um, Mermaid Lagoon, Uncharted Mariner, and some Black Soot to get a little bit of drama going on. I'm also going to use that same one with my stencil with putting down my snowflake um, because the best background for any card really is glitter. It is. True facts. Um, I, I, I love the glitter. And so in this one, I used her um, Glitz Glitter Gel, uh, which kind of, I use the iridescent one, which kind of takes on the color of whatever it's on top of. Um, but more importantly, the reason that I showed you here, I'm just getting my placement where I want it. Um, so I did the snowflake kind of up and to the left because I wanted the flowers to really be the star of the show, even though I'm putting a ton of glad, like so much glitter in the background. Um, but I wanted to also show you the ink blending if you don't do the glitter. Maybe glitter is not your thing or maybe you're sending it somewhere um, where glitter would be problematic. Um, you know, like if you're sending it to someone who's, you know, over deployed overseas, like the, you can't send glitter that way. But um, it's super pretty and more subtle um, with just the ink blending. And I'm using the same colors that I used for the outside um, border. I guess we'll call it a border. We'll call it a border. Um, but very, very pretty. I use the glitter because <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, it's so pretty. So this stencil in this uh, little kind of mini release that Gina's doing, there is another stencil um, that she's releasing that is also super beautiful. Um, but I liked this one because it was a bit, bit well, the size is the same. They're bigger. This one has less intricacies. I know you're probably thinking I'm crazy because it is pretty intricate and it's a gorgeous stencil, um, which is why years later I'm still using it. <laughs> I'm still using it because it's beautiful. So here's where you're going to be able to see how it is a little bit more subtle. I cleaned everything off because I don't want to contaminate my glitter paste, my, my gel. Um, and so once... I had that cleaned off. I put it back down. I used Tombow Mono Multi Glue on the back of all of my stencils so that they stick down. Um, you could use any repositionable adhesive or you could tape it down. Um, but if you're wondering why mine's sticking and not moving, that is why. So here I'm just picking up a little bit and just working my way across the stencil. I am going to speed this up because the process is entirely the same. Um, I just like to kind of take my time with them to make sure everything gets filled in and I don't have to keep going over the same areas because um, it does dry pretty fast. Uh, so speaking of drying pretty fast, you're going to want to clean up your stencil and whatever tool you're using to apply it pretty quickly. Um, so like I always wipe off my tool right away with a wet baby wipe and then I take my stencil to the sink and I just wash it with soap and water. But can we talk about, look at how pretty this girl is. Hello, beautiful. You're gorgeous. Like so pretty. Here I'm just cleaning up my edges. I'm just using my finger to kind of push it over the edge. You do want to make sure though that you're not um, dragging it because you will then move the glitter down your card where you don't want it to be. Um, and now we're going to get into the stamping. So this is kind of the point of today's video. This um, set is gorgeous and I'm going to 
teach you a technique to give it even more dimension. Um, but I will tell you that these kits sell out super fast. I think this set will be available later on after the kit. I'm not positive, though. But I am going to link to you a couple of other poinsettias that she has in the shop that are beautiful uh, and would also work well with this. Any flower, I guess, um, you can use this technique for to add a different look or more shading. To me, it made sense with the poinsettia because, um, you know, in nature you see them and you can see the veins of in the petals. Uh, but I also like to use it a lot for leaves, and we'll talk about that too. Um, basically, I'm just filling in my centers um, with a yellowish gold combination. They're on the smaller side, so it didn't take a whole lot, just a couple of little dots of color to fill that in. And then we're going to move on to the coloring of the actual flower. Now, I have noticed recently, I've been doing more Copic coloring techniques, and my viewership is like plummeting, which I find hysterical because most people know I'm a colorist. Um, but I have a feeling it has something to do with the Brooks trial, so we'll see. Um, so here, I wanted to show you that the basics of laying down the color, I like to start with my lightest color in case I make a mistake, don't change. So when adding the shading, you're going to add it where two points meet and where one lays on top of the other. That stays the same, even with the technique, because you want it to make sense when you're looking at the image that the shading is in its appropriate place. So I'm going in with my lightest color and I am sh adding shading where I want it to be the darkest. Now you may be asking yourself, Kelly, why? are you adding shading to the tip of that petal? And the reason I'm adding shading to the tip of that petal is so that it looks more rounded. Um, that isn't something that is necessary, but I wanted to just give you a little bit of mapping here for where the shading should go before we get into the technique with our mid-tone. So here's the technique. We're going to go over the lines that we just put down, but then we're also going to add lines into the petals. We're going to just add stripes, even widths apart for the most part. Um, here I will point out on this petal, I did a little bit of um, shaping on the right hand side. That's unnecessary. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> I was just going through and following the lines I had already put down and then I was like, that doesn't even make any sense. Um, so I'm going to go over it and because we're using more mid-tones, by the end of it, you won't even be able to see that part benefit of starting with your lightest colors. But through each petal, I am going through, I am adding the shading where it would go, where it's tucked under, or where something's laying on top of it, or where it meets another point. And then I'm adding these diagonal lines. I am following the shape of the flower, um, or the shape of the petal. So if it's like this one is, you just see the side of it, I am rounding it out to the right, because that's how the petal is drawn. But for the most part, it really is just adding a series of lines. Some of these petals have them already drawn in. And for the ones that have them already drawn in, I'm just going to follow what's already there. The illustrator knows what they're doing as far as how they want their flower to look or be shaded. Um, so I am going to just follow what they have. And I will say that the sets that I'm, the additional sets that I'm going to link to already have the lines. So those may be easier to start practicing with before you start kind of creating your own um, because the lines are already in there. But the, the technique would be the same. You would just follow the lines that are already there. So at this point, I have all of my lines put in and I'm going to continue working out to my darkest color and pretty much everything the same. Like, we're just going to keep adding in these lines. Um, and you can notice that they're not, I'm literally going right over the color that I just put down. I'm not adding any more to what's already there. I'm just going over what I have already have down. Um, you want to make sure that you're keeping your lines relatively thin. I mean, they certainly aren't fragile by any means, but, or delicate, that, but you want to make sure that you're keeping them with a lot of open space because that open space is how we're going to get the dimension. So anyway, like I said, I have noticed that the, the viewers, the views are down and considering my husband's been so involved in watching 
<laughs> this Brooks trial that he hasn't even been watching mine. Um, I think that maybe that has something to do with it. So I will be interested to see now that it's over if uh, things come back up. Because I know that several people were fascinated with watching it because it was wild. Um, but anywho... So, as far as life goes, we, I told you I would tell you about the pumpkin patch story. So, we had decided that we were going to go, um, last year we didn't go pick pumpkins because I was so pregnant with Caitlin. Um, oh, wait, back to the card, sorry. So, here on my darkest color, I'm going to do everything the same except I'm not going to carry out my line as far. I'm going to kind of like flick it along the line that I have drawn, but I'm not going to take it all the way out to the edge. Would it be some huge issue if you took it all the way out to the edge? No, it would not. So, if you feel like that's a little too much, then don't worry about it. Just take it all the way out to the edge. But this just gives us a bit more of a rounded look to the petals because they would be darker where they're kind of um, like cupping into the center. So uh, we didn't go pick pumpkins last year because I was enormously pregnant. And I'm very fortunate that I have a friend who owns a farm and she sells pumpkins. So she actually brought them right to work. And I just picked out a couple of pumpkins and brought them home. This year, Peanut requested that we go pick pumpkins. So we did. And we went to, um, it, it's a place that's local. Again, we're very fortunate that it's close by. We took the kids and there's like, they have a lot of things that they offer. One of them is the pumpkin village, which you have to pay per person, <laughs> $17 per person. Uh, anybody under two gets in free, but you're paying the full 17 bucks for your small children back to the card. Um, so here we're going to go, we're going to work in reverse and we're going to go darkest to lightest, but now we're going to start filling in some of those sections. So we're going to go just a little bit to the left and right of the lines that we already have there. Um, so it starts to kind of fill them in. You will have smaller petals that get filled in quicker. Don't worry about it. You might not have your lightest color in every single one of the petals just because they're smaller, they're tucked back behind things. Um, you don't have to have the lightest color in every one of the petals, but you should be able to fit at least three colors, I would think. Um, and you're just going to go through and you're going to see the back of my flower gets much darker than the front because those petals are smaller. They are not as open and they are not um, as forward facing. So, um, yeah, so we spent like $51 to get into this thing. And it's a very large property. They have like an apple store. They have the pumpkin village. They have... Um, apple picking that you can pay to do. They have the pumpkin patch. They have uh, potato sack slides. They have like a little farm. So there's quite a bit of things that you're getting for your $17. But I have a one-year-old and a nine-year-old. So really only my nine-year-old is participating in any of these, <laughs> in any of these things. And we're pushing Caitlin around in her stroller. But the main purpose of us going is one, for my husband to get apple cider, but he made that very clear. Um, and two, for the kids to get pumpkins. So we're walking around and, you know, looking at all the things and, you know, we, they played in like the little corn pit. Um, and we realized like we're looking for this pumpkin patch and we're up on top of this hill and there's a ton of stuff at the bottom of the hill, but the hill is steep, yo. The hill is no joke. So we <laughs> start making our way down the hill. Fortunately, Caitlin loves a bumpy uh, stroller ride. She was very entertained by all the bumpity bumps. And um, so we make our way down there and we realize that all the way down there is where the pumpkin patch is. And you pick your pumpkin, you measure your, you weigh it. It's by weight, 50 cents per pound. And then you pay for the pumpkin down there. Let's go back to the card. So here you can see I'm now onto my lightest color and Copics are transparent. So if you put a lighter color over a darker color, it will remove some of it. So you may see me going over and filling in areas that even though they've already been filled in by the previous color, I'm still going over them. And that's because it will lighten it up a touch. So just going over, filling in my lightest areas. And you can see that even just by like adding these lines, and that's all we did was lines, like 
Nothing super exciting, nothing really technical, just lines. This flower has so much more dimension now. Like, it's she's a stunner. Like, just beautiful. And so I'm going to color the other one the exact same way. I would have left it in, but it was it would have been too long. And now we're going to use the same technique to do the leaves. The leaves, this technique you could probably use on every single leaf, on every single stamp set that you, like floral stamp set that you own, because the lines are already there for most of them. Just follow the lines. It's so easy and it gives them this texture, this dimension that, you know, it's almost like when we were kids and we colored in coloring books and you would just follow the outline and then kind of fill it in lighter towards the center. Like, it's the same exact concept. So I'm going to do it the first way, and then I'll show you how I make them a little bit more ruffly, which is a way you can switch up the technique um, for kind of a different look. So um, it's all the way down at the bottom of the hill, guys. So we go down there, and Peanut is like, he's going to pick out one for himself, and he's going to pick out one for his sister, because obviously she's one. And, well, she's not one yet. Next week. I know. Crazy. Um, but she's not going to pick out her own pumpkin here. So he's out there, he's, you know, playing on some hay bales, he's doing, you know, his thing, he finds some pumpkins, he picks out the two that he wants for him and his sister, and then he looks at me and goes, don't, aren't you going to pick some pumpkins? And I was like, nah, fam, I'm going to get my pumpkins at the store because I cannot carry four pumpkins up this hill. Like, we're going to be on the struggle bus with two. So we weigh them, we pay them. $14 for my two pumpkins. And then we're trying to figure out how we're going to get the pumpkins like to be carried. So we try a couple of different things, seeing if we can fit them in the underneath of the stroller, in the backpack that we have for um, the baby's items. Like nothing works. We just have to we fit hers because it's a little bit smaller underneath the stroller. So now we just have this one we have to carry. So Eric's like, what do you want? You want the baby? You want the pumpkin? And I was like, I'll carry the pumpkin for a little bit and then we'll go from there. So I carry the pumpkin. Now, most of the time I would tell my child that he has to carry his own things because I'm not his, you know, personal assistant. I'm his mother. But he can't. It's too heavy. So I'm carrying the pumpkin. Eric's pushing the baby. Nathan's just off, you know, in la-la land enjoying, <laughs> enjoying the view. And then we get to the bottom of the hill and he's like, what, which one do you want? And I was like, I've been carrying the, um, the pumpkin. So I'll take the baby and you can have the, uh, pumpkin for now. Okay. Back to the card. So here we've filled in everything. Lightest, to darkest, darkest, to lightest. We've done the same thing. It's, it has quite a bit of dimension, which I'm happy with, but I want it to be more ruffly. And so here's how you can go in and add even further dimension when you feel like you're comfortable doing that, is in between these sections, I'm going to add just a little flick of color. I am starting with my darkest color because I'm doing it after the fact, but you could do this the same way. You could add this in at the same time you do the other lines. And then I'm going to extend that little triangle of color with um, my two mid-tones. And you're still going to see that we have plenty of highlight, that this just adds in some shadows, and it's going to make it look so much fuller, so much rufflier, like they have so much more movement. And really isn't that what we're trying to create when we're talking about dimension, is that we want them to look uh, more realistic. And so this is just another, these extra triangles are just something else that you can add. And then I'm going to do this other ones the same way. And this is it. This is our whole image. So I super love this. Here, I was a little bit nervous that my um, background might be too much, uh, but I think that it's not. I think <laughs> I don't think that glitters too much. Uh, but what I am going to do before I die cut this out is I am going to outline around it in a similar teal color to get rid of that white outline and help it blend in better. I did this beforehand um, where I normally don't because I knew that I had the um, glitz glitter on the background and um, I wouldn't be able to, like, I didn't want to risk coloring my glitter, ruining my Copic nibs. Um, so I just did it beforehand and that worked out just fine. 
So now once that's done, I am going to go in and outline it and then I will die cut it and we will start the assembly of the card. So I was like, okay, you take the pumpkin, I'll take the baby. So I'm pushing, <laughs> I am pushing this baby uphill in this stroller with her weight and the weight of an extra pumpkin. I am like, I, mama needs a water break. Holy smokes, guys. Like I don't work out. Let's be real. I don't exercise regularly. I am pushing 40. I'm like, no, I, no, mm -mm, no. And my husband was teasing me as he's carrying his one pumpkin up the thing. And he was like, oh, you gonna make it? Girl, you gonna make it? I was like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna make it. I am not going to make it. Like, I, is there a bench for us people to sit down and take a little break? So here's where I decided I actually ended up using a sentiment from the set. The other ones just felt a little bit too big. So I am going to be uh, white heat embossing this on black. Um, and then I'll just trim it into a label. So who decided, I want to know, who decided that putting the pumpkin patch at the bottom of the hill, like two miles away from the cars, was a good idea? Who? I mean, logistically, no thank you. Not a good plan. Um... So we we did, we carried them all the way back up. We carried them through peanut jumping on the trampoline. And like, so I feel badly sometimes because, you know, his sister is a little bit younger than him. I cannot jump on the trampoline. I've had two babies. That's not in the cards for me. Um, and so I'm like, I feel bad sometimes. But we happen to run into our neighbor and the boys are the same age. So he met the neighbor here, I just wanted to show you, like, you could just put a sentiment on this beautiful snowflake and be done with it. Gorgeous. Love it. Um, but we're not. We're going to put flowers on it. So uh, he ran into the neighbor. So they were playing on the trampolines together. And then I was like, all right, you know, we're, it's getting close to time to feed your sister. We're going to have to make our way to the car and go. And um, he was, you know, oh, trampoline, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, dude, they literally live next door to us and they own a trampoline. Like, you could leave here now in 15 minutes, be home, and continue doing the same thing that you were doing. Like, let's let's peck it in, kid. We're going. Um, so, all in all, it was a very nice day, but I learned that I am extraordinarily out of shape. Uh, and walking uphill, I felt like my, you know, how my dad used to be like, I walked uphill with no shoes on both ways to school and five feet of snow. Like, that's how I felt. I felt like an old, <laughs> old curmudgeon talking about the hill to my husband as I was doing it. So here I glued it down with my Gina K Connect glue. I popped up my sentiment on foam. I'm adding some more glitter because glitter, that's why. And then I'm going to put in just a couple of little white dot highlights into the centers. And then that's the whole card. So like I said, I know that this kit will probably sell out very quickly. I do think it'll be available later on, but I will link to some other poinsettia sets that she has that are beautiful and would 100% you'd be able to do this technique with and it might even be a little easier because they have the lines. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Oh, I forgot to mention, I will be live on the Honeybee YouTube channel at 8.30 Eastern time tonight and there's giveaways. So I hope you'll join us. I will link to that, um, to their YouTube channel. Okay. Now I appreciate you. I will catch you on the next video. Bye.